Bradford, show us your guitar rig. I, I can do that. All right, because I want to see. That was a beautiful I, setup, Brian. I've been, I've been <laughs> <Expert>. standing. <laughs> Expert. Hey, br before this, Brian goes, Bradford, I'm going to set this up. Bradford, show us your guitar rig. <laughs> you can tell this man knows how to set up a video. <laughs> Slow. Sometimes it's all you need. So I've been standing next to you and listening to it, what you're playing in my in-ear monitor mix, and it sounds awesome. So. Yeah. Well, likewise. You put this. Well, thank you. The, we'll, we'll do yours after this. Okay, well, yours is cool. I'll set it up. Okay. <laughs> so for this, I really wanted to create an actual fly rig. I wait, wait. Are you saying that you won't create a fly rig that you actually flew with? I did. Because you we did. see a lot of people creating fly rigs, and my sense is that they just want to buy another more pedals. Right. <laughs> I will say though, it it could be like on the fly, like when yes. you're on the fly. I got you. I got it. Okay. However, I was trying to figure out how I could like. I, I tried a lot of iterations. I just want to have fun with this. So yeah. uh, I kept it fairly simple. Yep. It, the, the line just goes basically right down. Um, first is the bloom. I love the Jackson bloom. It's pretty good. I use it on a like more subtle setting. Always when I use compressors, it's more about sustain for me than anything. Uh, a little bit of compression though, just to keep things a little more even. And the, the boost on it is very good. So I like it as a clean boost. There's some stuff that like I need just a little more hair on than I did with my bass tone. There's that. My tried and true trusty protein. This one, I'm certain Dave Brown tells me there's no reason. I believe him, <laughs> kind of. But he says there's no reason why the versions should sound different. I'm convinced that this black one sounds better. I have three of them and this one's my, <laughs> it sounds better to Which me. Which version is it? This is a version two. Okay. So uh, splittable side, side jacks, but they're side jacks, not top. The version three is top mounted. Um, also, it's analog so I can, well, the, the new one's like digital switching. This is extra stuff. The, we'll we'll okay. cut this. Next, I actually split and I go out to like my volume pedal that I keep on the side and then out to a tuner, back into the Walrus M1 for my modulation. I basically had like a slower trim, a faster trim that was a little more heavy, so it was like more obvious, and I had a chorus. So that's where Stereo Sarts went into the Stereo Mood Mark II. I'm still learning it, but I was using it just to like grab like the one and like the 151 basically, just like do that and then sending it through the reverb side to kind of give some texture. And it kind of throbbed on and off and did some glitchy stuff because I love doing that. Um, the microcosm wouldn't fit. Into the Strymon LCAP V2. Uh, it's the new version with MIDI. I was gonna use MIDI, but I ran out of time setting everything up. The V2 sounds every bit as good as the original. Into the Big Sky, my go-to. That one I was like, I can't not have that. So there's that. Out to two Tone X's. Two. Uh, our matchless clubman. It right now it says match, so I actually I'm pretty sure it's the clubman. I can't see it. And then the AC30, which we label the 64 as 64 AC30, don't yeah, we? So, that's the so free this one. is this is the free one. So the the free Corgera 021 with the Alnica Blues sounds Alnico, which I learned about. Yeah. Aluminum, nickel, cobalt. Okay. Interesting. Anyways, um, I learned about that at Curtis's house. Um. Yeah, I just like it's a little more girthy. I like it. So, Walrus Canvas Stereo DI, it's front of house, line isolator, front of house. Cool. This is my Shelton Skyflight. It's phenomenal. It features the quad shot setup. Uh, one of these is actually an actual Blondie Ridge pickup, basically. Oh, it's a Tele pickup. It's there. a Tele pickup. And that's the one I use. So it's that's this one here. For good reason. So it sounds, it sounds it's this one right here. Oh nice. So I use that. If you, you can use both together as a humbucker or just a strap pickup. Vega trim, amazing fretwork and checking, amazing neck. Great team effort here by Mr. Curtis Lamberton and Mr. Shelton Breeden. So this thing is my favorite, I think. I don't say that very often. You don't. This is my favorite. Bold statement. Bold, Strong for word. me, that's bold. Brian. Yes. Show us your rig. Thank you for that transition, Bradford. <laughs> it was clearly pro. Yes. This man's a professional. I know what All you're right. doing. My rig is simple, but yet complex. And I've got a few quirks. It's simple in the fact that it is a, a guitar into an Axe FX3 with an FC12 controller and a fractal like expression pedal for volume. That's my rig, XLR out, done. Thanks, now, <laughs> here's where it gets more complicated. 
And I did so. I used some power features that Fractal offers. Power user. Power user features. So I have a set. I I built it all from one master preset. So like all my amps and drives and all were the same for every preset. But I made a separate preset for every song. And so I had, and for single coils and humbuckers, because I didn't know what guitar I was going to play. So I had about 50 presets. And uh, I used this feature in the Axe FX that Fractal has called Global Blocks. And so what that means is all of the single coil presets for every song, the, the two amps and the cabs were linked. And then in the humbucker ones, the two amps and the cab was linked. So that means that in any preset, any of those 50 song presets, if I heard from front of house, like, uh, you know, it, maybe you need a little more mid range or things were a little, little less gain, I can make an adjustment to the amp block and it made it in every single preset. It That's linked brilliant. them all. That's brilliant. Yeah, now I didn't have to use it because my tone was perfection. We had a pro at the soundboard, so I'm sure he EQ'd it and made it sound great in the house, but I was prepared if I had to make a change uh, I love using song presets because it's just one, you know, press and you get the sound. But it is tedious if you got a bunch. If you want to make a change in one, you got to go and copy and paste in every single preset. But if you use the global lock feature, they all link together. It's pretty cool. Now, let's talk guitar. This is a new guitar for me, and I really, I debated a lot. What guitar am I bringing to this conference? I went with the Paul Reed Smith. Uh, 594 single cut 10 top and I was not disappointed this That's thing awesome this thing well, thank you Bradford this thing brought the goods and you know you can split the coils on these pickups these are 5815 TCI LT TCI pickups this is what comes on standard on the 594s uh, but you can split each one of them so for a lot of the like more Chorusy, you know, sounds that are like in the in Battle Belongs, for example. You know, I played it. Yeah, it well, you know, a little more of that '80s, almost like a Strat type vibe. I didn't sound like a Strat, but like I would split the neck and be in the middle position, and it would give it a lot more like airiness, I guess. Uh, so fantastic guitar, played great, no issues with it whatsoever. It's a champ. That's my rig.